Uh, welcome to this little presentation of our most ambitious feature uh, that we are working on for quite a while already. We already talked about it several times, but this time it will be a little bit different. So before we start jumping into the presentation, here's a little disclaimer. Everything that you are about to see in this presentation was done by the EUPU team, so, well, mostly. We got help from the vehicle content team and the VGPU team. So what you will see here is mainly placeholder art that was either done by Guillermo, Bastien, or me, so members of our team, and it's gameplay that we focus on in this presentation. So what you will notice here is also that the UI is still work in progress, so uh, visual changes even throughout this uh, entire presentation. So we are still iterating. But let's start with the actual presentation. Those that follow us for quite some time probably know that about the resource network already, but let's do a brief recap. We will be talking here about our technology, that is resource network, and the engineering gameplay that can be called a child of the resource network. The engineering task will allow you to manage your ships, outposts, and possibly other things. Let's have Guillermo uh, talk about the technology first. Uh, so welcome on stage, uh, Guillermo. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Guillermo Bilbao, gameplay programmer for this team. And I'm going to talk about the Resource Network. So what is the Resource Network? Uh, the main drive for the Resource Network was replacing the previous pipe system you might have heard about with a new system that was uh, more generalized, easier to expand, and that would support all the gameplay we actually want to do. And yeah, so it is a network, as you can see on that picture. Uh, so in the connections between different items, even those inside of your containers. And it enables specifically the relay gameplay we're going to show right after. So it ha will have a global impact. You're going to see it in ships. You're going to see it in outposts. It's built to work with the cargo system in some ways. And as for interacting with it, uh, the engineering gameplay we have so today is going to be the biggest example, but you will also see it in other places, especially in missions. Uh, let's have Thorsten talk about it a bit more. So, hello again. So, as a crew member of a ship or as a person managing an outpost, you have several responsibilities. Um, where the engineering topic can be split in three activities, and you can decide to share those responsibilities or take them all by yourself. It's really up to you. Every task requires their own skills and their own tool sets. There is tuning. Here you are responsible for preparing your ship. Your journey did not start yet, so you adjust your ship items based on your goals for the travels. Exchange sub-items, adjust the default settings of your power plant, Basically, operations that require you to turn off the items or even remove them from its, their sockets. The next activity is maintaining, and this is all about damage control and keeping the items in pristine or pristine enough state. You are the mechanic uh, that makes sure that everything is and stays operatable. Maybe even go further in the sense of caring for the items. And what caring means is here reducing the wear and tear rate by regularly removing dust or oiling the items, just as, as some quick examples. So let's actually show you some of the maintenance you can already do and will be able to do. So here we start with two gameplay mechanics that are already in the game, so technically nothing new, but the entire engineering loop ties them nicely together. Uh, here you saw me collecting uh, IMC, or still collecting, and uh, now I will take the shield generator of the recently destroyed Gladius uh, to use them as a spare part for myself.
So all of this is, of course, optional. So you can pur purchase those items already and in the future even assemble them for yourself. So crafting. Um, while the Fury approaches, uh, you might get the glimpse of a debug UI. So the, there is the Fury now coming. Uh, I activated uh, the debug UI to show you the health state of each item. And uh, what you should have seen is that the shield generator is fully destroyed and the power plant that I'm about to take out now is uh, in low health. Low health means you can still repair it. So, which you will, will be happening now with uh, Guillermo and Pete uh, repairing the power plant after I removed it from the Fury. So it's making it fully functional again. And here you see the debug UI, the health is now fully up again, and that means that it runs at, uh, at full, uh, yeah, full efficiency again. And here you also see that the shield generator is at zero health. So the destroyed shield generator cannot be repaired because it's destroyed. So I have to exchange it with the spare one that I collected from the Gladius. So with all those repairs being done, uh, the Fury is operatable again and it can go its way. So getting back to the responsibilities. Uh, a big one is managing your ship, which includes resources, but also more general aspects. Uh, you have to manage the power distribution and come up with informed decisions, like reacting to hazards, like malfunctions, fire, low energy, but also calling out items that need repair and maintenance. You will delegate the rest of your crew to keep your ships intact, like giving clear priorities of what needs to be done first. Let's take a look at another video here. So this is the first glimpse of the engineering UI in action. It is still being worked on, so it's heavy work in progress. Uh, let's start with looking at the item view. So you can see the full setup of the network with the relays, the green dots connecting to each other and the relays connecting to the items. Color and shape uh, below the icons should help you identify the different item types like power plants, weapons, also have helping differentiate between consumer, producer and converters. You can tell the current state of the item, that means the amount of energy it produces, consumes or has stowed the health state it is in, the current wear and tear on the item, and the current state it runs in, like charging or being in an idle state. You can directly interact with these items, turn them on and off, and in the future even switch their states. If you hover over a relay, that I will be hopefully doing soon, <laughs> You will also see that the amount of fuses that are still active and, uh, yeah, because a relay consists of several fuses, basically uh, they are their own uh, set of lives. And here you see all the, the details. And you can click on the items to see a, a 3D render of the, the power plant here, uh, the quantum drive, sorry. And here's the, the relay overlay. Uh, here Pete shoots a relay to show the UI updates on the screen. So once this relay got shot at, you will see the update here on the UI that suddenly the entire right-hand side of your ship lost uh, power connection. And what you might have not picked up on the screen is that actually the power plant here that I'm now focusing on is on low health. So I'm commanding Simon to repair the power plant to get it fully operational again. So, something to highlight here, take a closer look at the doors. Since we also track the door states, you see that uh, you can watch movement inside your ships now nicely. So, you can track players moving around in your ship, 
and even close doors for them or like compartments in this case where Simon just forgot to close the compartment. Um, yeah, so Pete destroyed the relay, but we need the ship in fully functional state, so um, yeah, I'm running now with a fuse and place it on the, in the relay, so make the relay work again. Um, what you can also do with the doors is that you can create safe pathways, because you sitting at this engineering screen have more information in regards to your ship than the others. So you open doors to create a path that the players on your ship has to, have to take. Um, now to the room view. That is mainly the life support controls plus controlling all doors. Uh, again, we show the details of each room, like the temperature, pressure, atmosphere composition, so everything that is relevant for like you living on a ship. We also show the door states where you can now have precise control over each door in your ship, as you see here. Uh, this will also allow you to have a more control over which door or compartments to open. So here the, again showing the opening the power plant. That also helps very much in, in already telling players, hey, you should repair this item, so I open that door for you, and they directly know which item you mean. Um, it also allows us to control like the outside facing doors much better. So you can directly open if you just want to open the left side ramp or the front side facing ramp or the back facing ramp. So we did it last year already, but uh, let's make our crew suffocate again. So the moment that you basically pull off their helmets, and now me pressing the cycle button, you see that the entire atmosphere in this room is vented. And yeah, well, uh, the con consequence is uh, death. So, as you can tell, engineering gameplay will bring a lot of changes. Uh, some of those changes are adding batteries to ships that will allow you to get a little bit of extra power for a short amount of time. Allowing you to control items directly, where it's not only their on-off state, but also their resource consumption. And where the biggest change that will come in this update is, to the resource, is basically to the resource consumption and generation. So let's talk about energy balance. Currently, ships are balanced such that they consume less energy than they produce. What I mean with that is that the sum of all items or, uh, requires less energy than the power plant will provide. And uh, this has to change. The energy rebalance that I will explain to you now will affect mainly bigger ships. Single-seaters will, will still behave like they do now. For big ships, we will focus on item groups. Those require energy. But your ships will not provide enough energy to have all components run at 100% all the time. Instead, you have to decide what you want to have permanently powered by your power plant. So managing decisions will have an impact now. You could decide, as in this example, to shut down your thrusters to turn on the weapons. Isn't the best choice? Since you will not be able to maneuver, so might not help when you are attacked, you would be able to shoot, though. And here comes in the batteries. In scenarios where you need to react, you can activate the batteries and use the additional power. Batteries won't last forever, but you at least can power additional systems. You will be able to recharge the batteries again, but you need to free up energy from the power plant to direct into the batteries. I think that was a little bit more than just a recap, but uh, now Guillermo will talk about malfunctions.
So I will talk about malfunctions real quick and get you guys to the next video since we're a bit behind schedule. Uh, what are malfunctions? You've seen misfires in the persistent universe for seals and for thrusters. You've seen a very basic version of it. We're making them more complex. We're making them more lethal in some ways and more fun to interact with. Uh, also, uh, some of the new malfunctions will include fire, uh, spreading misfires that represent electrical surges going through the ship, or uh, signature bursts, which increases your signature and makes you show up on enemy sensors uh, more easily. As for how you will counter them, uh, you've, saw, you've seen suffocating people with life support. You will also be able to suffocate pe uh, the fire with life support, which is probably more useful. Uh, you will be repairing them, not necessarily only with a repair beam, but also replacing parts or some uh, bespoke uh, behavior per misfire. And if all else fails, just turn it off and on. And here's a video of the fire in action. Uh, you've seen in other videos the fire. This is a small fire. You can just put it out with a fire extinguisher. Pretty simple. It just works. Uh, here's a bit of a bigger uh, fire. It might be that you cannot only put it out on your own. So here we have one crew member that's going to try to put it out with a fire extinguisher uh, to mix results. And here we have the option of using the life support system for some sort of before and yes, bend in the area. And now you can see that the fire, uh, once we get to that compartment, has been successfully put out. OK, so let's get Thurston back on stage. Uh, you, see, you saw uh, a lot of the systems in action, but let's get a video of one of our play sessions, which is going to probably show it a bit better. So yeah. Um, I have to excuse myself already, because I, I was leading this group of players being attacked by, by the Gladius, and I did a poor job, but more to that uh, in, in that video. Um, yeah, yeah, we wanted to talk about... So, for this demo, we have modified the damage system slightly to uh, represent impact penetration on a very basic level. So you are going to see that the, quan uh, the quantum drive is going to be hit by the Gladius attacking the ship. So, yeah, being attacked by a Gladius for an A2 isn't like a big challenge, but in this setup, we were not like fully staffed. That means we had our engineers running around and uh, yeah, no one being seated in the in the in the turrets. Uh, so, yeah, our our goal was basically to flee the Gladius, and uh, yeah, with the Gladius actually shooting the, the quantum drive and damaging it, I thought, hey, it's a good idea to to tell uh, Pete and Simon to to repair the quantum drive as a priority. As you can see, uh, I somehow missed that uh, the habitation room caught fire. Um, I tried to. Yeah, well, um, prevent further damage to it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I failed. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that was causing a bit to the panic, so I even got distracted in this moment. So uh, we, we managed to have the quantum drive survive, but here I notice, oh, actually the, the power plant also starts to take damage, and at this moment, I'm also telling uh, Pete and, and Simon to, to switch their attention to the power plant because if we use, lose the power plant, it's also like almost impossible to flee. So here I, I realize, oh my god, we are going down fast. And I think at this point now, yeah, I opened the uh, compartment to make it access faster, but that was already too late, so the power plant died. And yeah, so uh, the backup is to activate the batteries, which I did here. So the, yeah. Um, Simon and Pete still tried their very best to, to fix it, but um, yeah, didn't manage to. Um, yeah, uh, the attack moved to the forward side, uh, targeting the, the, the batteries because the player who was attacking us actually knew the ship layout. And 
Yeah, here I, I noticed that the second power plant has also got attacked, so have to redirect the, our, our mechanics to it. And at this point, we wanted to flee, and then I realized why, does, why doesn't the quantum drive work? And uh, as you saw, that there is a relay that also got destroyed, so uh, here you see it very clearly that yeah, with a relay being destroyed at the, at the quantum drive position, that means that the quantum drive cannot be accessed from the, from the pilot seat. That means that uh, yeah, I, I also had to get that repaired. So it was uh, a bit chaotic. Um, everything was also happening a bit too fast. Here, trying to save the second power plant because we are we're already running out of battery life. Uh, so yeah, if we would have lost uh, the the second power plant, that would have been our certain death. And I think at the yeah, in the next part of the video, um, yeah, we yeah, basically asked someone to to fix the the relay at the back so that we still be able to jump away. Yeah, so we at least managed to, to save one of the power plants. Yeah, that's, that's now... Uh, I think it was Pete running there and fixing the fuse. And the next step was... Uh, the pilot trying to push uh, the, yeah, the the quantum drive, but it was too late. Uh, we died, and <laughs> the end of the show. Yeah, okay. thanks. So, what you just saw gives a good idea of idea of how busy ships will be, and what meaningful uh, multi-crew gameplay will look like. But what about the future? Since we worked on technology that will be used throughout the entire game, you will see more and more coming utilizing this tech. It will introduce system, systemic gameplay uh, with allowing players to come up with creative ways of uh, manipulating their environments. Sabotaging a power plant or destroying a vital relay that connects it all to shut down an entire enemy base that can include its life support or security systems. It would also tie in nicely with Maelstrom, that you just saw. Uh, and anything that will break off will lose its connection the network to the network and therefore have an impact on its functionality. So it's a real systemic feature. The technology allows us also to take further steps into the crafting profession as well as in the base building, where both are related to each other. Bases built by player will also form resource networks and come with their unique challenges similar to ships. We are already, we are all really excited about the future of this tech and all the associated features. So there's a huge thanks for, for all people involved. So thanks to the entire EUPU team, the vehicle teams, Jared, Active Feature team, and the Arena Commander team. They all were super supportive to get this uh, behemoth into a state that you could see here. And it's something that has been a long time coming, and we are really proud of it. So thank you for sticking with us on this journey. Wait, there's one more thing. So we really want to get your hands, uh, we really want you to get your hands on this because we already had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I hope all of you have heard of the experimental mode in the Arena Commander. So we want to bring you what you saw here as an experimental mode before we put everything into the PU.